Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Sunday. Uh, hope the weather is better where you're at. I know my buddy Rod and uh, some other uh, friends of ours up north are, are uh, expected to get some, some bad weather. And I think it's supposed to snow here in Kentucky later on in the week. So I don't know. It goes from rain to snow to snow to rain to sunshine. So the saying is here, if you don't like the weather in Kentucky, wait 15 minutes. So anyway, just want to show a little... Uh, haul i got uh, from my comic shop i think i got like one newer book and the rest of them are uh, silver and bronze uh just some stuff i've had in the cart for a while and stuff that i wanted for a while so uh i uh, i'll get into that in a minute I was, i've been back here pretty much the whole weekend uh had a call from a guy i got recommended from another musician a friend of mine that i played with for a country and western band and they got a got a couple of big shows coming up and so they want me to learn 57 songs in a month. So business as usual. <laughs> Usually when I'm trying to get a band up, you know, nothing happens. And all of a sudden somebody calls me out of the blue. Hey, we need a bass player. So, you know, a lot of stuff I'm familiar with. Uh, some other stuff I'm not. So I've been back here kind of working my little tired, gnarled fingers a little bit. So hopefully that'll go well. And that'll lead to some money to buy some more comics. So, there's there's always a reason behind it huh? anyway just want to show the stuff i got this one is a new one i had missed this issue uh justice society of america number seven and i do not i'm not sure i think eight might be out already but i think nine ten eleven and twelve are gonna come out sometime in 2029 because i don't know what the deal is with this book if it's if the art's you know, if the guys are just that slow drawn or John's is just that slow at writing the scripts or what the deal is. I mean, I like it, but I mean, you know, it's taking way too long uh, for it to come out. So uh, another thing, I, I was wanting to watch uh, the new Crisis animated and I was going to watch it with my son uh, last night. Uh, but they had come back from a, a little day trip and I think my grandson was sick and my son was starting to get sick. So he, he, uh, he said he'd have to take a rain check. And so, well, I'm going to go ahead and watch it. And then, I'll, you know, I want to watch it again. So, but I really liked it. You know, it's like part one of three. Totally different from the original Crisis. There's a lot of elements uh, from the comic book version. A lot of great characters. A lot of Easter eggs in there. And uh, I think the rest of it's going to be good. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people loved it. So, uh, you know, anything to do with Crisis, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get it. So, I, I really enjoyed it. And I think... Uh, I think our buddy, Dr. Silver Age Rod, I think he enjoyed it. And uh, I think he just put up a video uh, on YouTube showing he got an AOK -OK from Eric K. And uh, so you guys want to go check that out if you haven't already. I know I'm going to do it myself probably tomorrow after work. But uh, good issue. I already read this one. So now yeah, we're getting into some older stuff. Uh, and I just I saw this cover and I just loved it. And the art inside is awesome. It's just uh, the Severins don't get near enough credit for the artwork they did uh, for Marvel. Of course, you know, uh, I know John Severin did a lot of artwork for uh, DC too in the art in the war genre. But this is just uh, it's just an awesome cover. This is Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos number 74. 15 cent cover. Love that uh, great little uh, corner box with the price. But uh, this is a brother and sister special. This is John and Marie Severin. Uh, I guess it's John on the cover, and I think John and Marie on the interiors. So uh, the styles are very, very similar, so you can't go wrong. Awesome book. Another one I've wanted for a while. I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm trying to complete this Micronauts series. You know, I'll just kind of get an issue. It's not like at the top of my list, but this is a cover I had to have. Uh, this is Micronauts number seven. 1979 with a man thing cover and you got some great art on the inside too by uh on the covers of michael golden on the inside it's michael golden and joe rubenstein so can't go wrong there at all sorry about the glare but just rebagged the border we're gonna go back to 1967 for the last issue of the first uh volume of space adventures uh, by charlton comics saw this uh cover a long time ago and i'd I really, uh, I just thought it was great. It got some great stories on the inside. It got some art by Pat Boyette and Jim Aparo. And it kind of had this, uh, I thought it was cool, kind of UFO uh, logo up there. So this is the last issue of the first series 
of space adventures. So really, really cool sci-fi book. Like I say, got some great art in it, great stories. So can't go wrong there. I think the other series came out like 1978 or 79, reprinted a lot of the the Captain uh, Adam stuff and uh, some other sci-fi stories. And I think these are really cool. I've only got three or four, but uh, when I see them pop up for a decent price, you know, I'll, uh, I'll grab one. Here is Mystery Comics Digest number 13, the Whitman variant. And these are all, this is from uh, 1973, I think. And these are all reprints from the Ripley's Believe It or Not comic, I do think. So lots of good mystery and horror stuff. Great painted covers. Probably another George Wilson special there. So, and, you know, the big fatty, as Higgy would say. And we'll throw out a very happy birthday to our buddy Higgy Pop Comics. I already messaged him uh, on the phone and I think Facebook. So uh, happy birthday, Higgy. I think they were coming back from New York today. So hope you had a great time, you and Hawk Woman. Okay, next book. Uh, speaking of Higgy, I think he was one of the many that have shown this book. And I was like, you know, I've got to have this. I just, it looks so cool. I like the futuristic stories. So uh, great, great colors on this cover. Superman 181. And we got the Superman from the future, 2965. This was like the first appearance. I think he's in the backup feature. Uh, yeah, very cool. And big news, I am now officially a member of the Herbie Club. <laughs> Here's Herbie 18. Fun stuff. Got uh, Kurt Schaffenberger on the uh, on the cover there. I think maybe Ogden Whitney did a lot of the interior art. You, uh, you couldn't get away with this stuff today. <laughs> Make way for the Fat Fury. And you get the Fat Fury costume on and his... Uh, his parents inside, I think they, his dad calls him Worthless or Worthless Fat Fury or something. So I was like, yeah, this is totally not PC, but a fun, fun little comic. And last two, but not least, uh, found a copy of Cull and the Barbarians number one. I think Michael Whelan uh, did this painted cover. Lots of great art on the inside. Got, uh, I think got Neil Adams, Ross Andrew, Wally Wood. Uh, John Severin, uh, and this has a reprint of Supernatural Thrillers number three, Valley of the Worm. I know uh, a lot of you guys know what that book is. With the Gil Kane cover, I know our buddy Dr. Monchilla, he's a big fan of that and several other people. Uh, but this is a, uh, it's got a black and white reprint of Supernatural Thrillers number three, you know, so I'm sure most of you know what that book is, but it's very cool. It's the art by Gil Kane and Ernie Chan, or Ernie Chua. You know, uh, I think we've discussed that, like on Comic Book Memories, uh, the name change and everything when it came to the States. But lots of great art and story in here. I think uh, Roy Crinkle does a couple of pages of art in this. So very cool. And last, but uh, certainly not least, had this in a, uh, I guess in a cart for a while. And I didn't think it was going to be there by the time I ordered the books. But uh, I was really lucky. And there's only two issues of this, and I know a lot of guys have this, but uh, I was a big fan of this TV show, and I just wanted to get the comics. So here's Time Tunnel number one, Gold Key, in the mid-60s, I'd say 67, maybe 66. I'm not sure what the time frame is, but uh, great painted cover. There's only two issues of this, and this is like really, you compare this to like a, like a Silver Age comic. And it's like Dell size, you know. So had to put this like in a Dell comic bag, uh, Mylar or whatever. But the only two issues of this, and I'm sure I'll get the uh, second issue at some point. But uh, I thought it was really cool, and I really wanted this to, uh, to be in my collection. I got a little photo corner right there. The rest of it's painted. So, guys, that's all I got. Uh, everybody's had a great weekend. Uh, back to work tomorrow unfortunately but uh we'll get it done and we'll uh we'll do it again hopefully soon i'm gonna i was, was kind of going through this stack of uh already coverless comics and uh i'm gonna try to do a little research see if i can find out what some of them are because i some of them i really don't know what the title of the book is there's pages missing 
And I kind of wanted to find out what at least, you know, an idea of what it is before I start showing stuff. I'm sure people could tell me, but I kind of want to do the research and uh, find out what they are. There might be like a coverless uh, copy of uh, Planet Comics in there somewhere, I think. Anyway, uh, just wanted to show the new haul and uh, want to wish everybody a happy week coming up. And I'll say I got, uh, I got a lot of homework to do. <laughs> so, guys, hope you're all well. And onward and upward.